Hi friends, our final project is Emission Control in Diesel Power Plant. Project members are R. Praveen, C. Arun Kumar, R. L. M. Damilan. And our project guide is Mr. M. Thiranavakarasan. So let us see the abstract of this project. We are going to do project regarding Diesel Power Plant Emission Control of the Pollutants. The pollutants coming out from diesel power plant are NOx which is 1100 ppm and SOx which is 190 ppm. The main objective of our project is to reduce NOx emission which has high concentration rate. This high concentration level pollutes environment to some extent. So we plan to reduce NOx concentration. It is reduced by using ammonia as a reagent. When ammonia is injected into exhaust stream, it reacts with the NOx present in the exhaust gas to form nitrogen and water. The chemical reaction that occurs is shown in the slide. Let us see the NOx cause and effects. NOx is the right term for oxides of nitrogen, a mixture of NO and NO2 which are byproducts of combustion at high temperatures. NOx causes respiratory diseases such as asthma, emphysema, bronchitis which can lead to premature death. NOx gases react to form smoke and acid rain as well as being central to the formation of tropospheric acid. Let us see the SOx cause and effects. SOx refers to all sulfur oxides, the major ones are SO2 and SO3. Sulfur dioxide is colorless with a pungentating odor and taste. It damages the respiratory system and also corrodes the metals and materials. So what are the NOx emission control methods? Primary methods are modification of combustion, modification of scavenge charging air, water injection, exhaust gas recirculation, humid air motor, three-way catalytic converter. Secondary methods are reburning, selective catalytic reduction and the plasma reduction systems. Which is the most efficient method? The method we have chosen to reduce NOx emission is selective catalytic reduction in which ammonia is used as a reagent for reducing the NOx emission. Ammonia is a colorless non-flammable liquefied gas. SCR technology is one of the most cost effective and fuel efficient technology. So the reward is up to 95% reduction in the NOx. Superimposing the numerous primary methods available will not have sufficient effect on the total amount of NOx which can be eliminated from the exhaust and doing so will lead to the significant engine cost increase. So what are the limitations of other methods? NOx cannot be reduced at source in diesel power plant because it decreases the power production capacity. Generally diesel power plant can produce 200 megawatts power. So the power production capacity may reduce. Exhaust gas recirculation we can install in diesel power plant to reduce NOx but it is an unfortunate method practically in that it reduces thermal efficiency of the engine. Modification of combustion method also reduces the overall power production capacity in the power plant. So let us see about the selective catalytic reduction. Selective catalytic reduction is the process in which Oxides of nitrogen contained diesel exhaust are reduced to nitrogen and water by injecting ammonia and the exhaust. Let us see the meaning of SCR. Selective means target knocks in the diesel exhaust. Catalytic means it requires a catalyst. So in this project we are using copper zeolite catalyst because there are so many catalysts available. Vanadium pentoxide, then uh, platinum, rhodium, palladium. But why we have chosen this copper zeolite catalyst is it is cost effective. It is very cheaper and it can operate even at a higher temperature so that we have chosen this catalyst. So reduction means NOx is reduced to nitrogen. What is the operating principle of SCR? The hot exhaust gas coming out from the engine exhaust is at 450 degrees Celsius. This is allowed to enter into the SCR system. So urea stored in the urea storage tank is injected into the exhaust stream. 
the heat from the hot exhaust reacts with urea to form ammonia and carbon dioxide this ammonia reacts with nox in the presence of copper zeolite catalyst to form nitrogen and water the following chemical reaction occurs it is shown in this slide let us see what is the meaning of ammonia slip ammonia slip will occur in this scr system but it can be rectified by using some methods so first of all let us see what is ammonia slip the effluent gas stream leaving the scr system contains the unreacted nox and some quantities of ammonia ammonia emissions are generally termed as ammonia slip ammonia slip means it is a reagent that has passed through the scr catalyst without participating in the chemical reaction what is the cause and effects of ammonia slip ammonia slip occurs when proper quantity of ammonia is not injected into the exhaust stream so ammonia slip will also lead to the formation of oxides of nitrogen again when the temperature exceeds 850 degree fahrenheit that means approximately 460 degree celsius so this ammonia excess ammonia will react with oxygen at the temperature above 850 degree centigrade to form oxides of nitrogen again ammonia slip will also lead to the formation of ammonium sulfate and ammonium bisulfate so how can we reduce this ammonia slip the ammonia slip can be reduced by maintaining ammonia injection below 850 degree fahrenheit ammonia is typically injected at a stoichiometric ratio of approximately 0.85 is to 1 to 0.9 is to 1 to maintain low ammonia slip levels this means that approximately 0.9 moles of ammonia is needed for every mole of nox that must be reduced in order to achieve the emission limitations so scr mechanism is shown in this slide so the um, pollutant is entering into the scr system urea is injected so when it enters uh, urea that means uh, urea is converted into ammonia by absorbing the heat in the exhaust then this ammonia and uh, enters into the scr catalyst the nox and ammonia reacts to form the water and nitrogen nitrogen is a harmless gas almost it is available in the atmosphere at 78 percentage so what is the disadvantage of ammonia slip is formation of ammonia sulfides so a small portion of sulfur dioxide in the fluid gas may be oxidized to sulfur trioxide so sulfur trioxide reacts with ammonia at about temperature to form ammonium bisulfate or ammonium sulfate what are the components of scr system so urea storage tank scr catalyst vaporizer loading unloading compressors dilution equipment piping flow control and emergency shut off valves injector nozzles instrumentation these are the main components of the scr system next where we have to install scr this is the main important thing in our project this is what our project indicates because scr can be installed after the engine exhaust but how we are going to install scr in this project the excess ammonia that does not react with nox will react with available so3 to form ammonium bisulfate ammonium sulfate we have seen this in previous slide so the scr reactor should be installed before the turbocharger as the temperature level will allow the use of normal commercially available heavy fuels which would not be possible if the scr system is installed after the turbocharger where condensation of ammonium sulfate or bisulfate will be problematic scr technology is shown in this slide so where we have to store urea what material we have to use urea can be stored in the following materials that is stainless steel then high alloyed authentic chromium nickel and chromium nickel molybdenum steels titanium 
வாட் ஆர் தி மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் மீன்ஸ் பாலி எத்திலின் பாலி ப்ரொப்பிலின் பாலி ஐசோபியூட்டலின் பெர்ஃப்ளூரோ ஆல்கஹால் அல்கைன் பெர்ஃப்ளூரோ எத்திலின் பாலிவினைல் டைல் ஃப்ளூரைடு பாலி டெட்ரா ஃப்ளூரோ எத்திலின் ஃப்ரீ ஆஃப் அடிட்டிவ்ஸ் So, materials that corrodes urea tank are unalloyed steels, galvanized steels, aluminium alloys, magnesium alloys, copper and brass. First, ammonia used to be vaporized. So, let us see what is the meaning of vaporization of ammonia. A vaporization system maintains a designated vapor pressure in the ammonia tank. Pressure is very important. At this pressure, the ammonia should be injected through an injector nozzle. Whenever the vapor pressure of the tank decreases below the set point, a vaporizer is automatically initiated to increase the vapor pressure to significant level. Hot exhaust gas can be used to vaporize the urea into ammonia. So, dilution of ammonia. Why dilution is important? Because following the vaporization, the reagent is emitted into a dilution carrier gas stream to keep the ammonia concentration below the explosive range and to facilitate mixing into the gas stream. The ammonia concentration of the gas stream injected upstream of the SCR bed is usually 3 to 5 percentage by volume. Let us see ammonia inject. How ammonia should be injected? So, injection is accomplished through a series of injection pipes positioned in a grid formation perpendicular to the flow rate and upstream of the catalyst. So, grid layout is to prompt good mixing of ammonia and flow gas and even distribution occurs to duct. Control of feed individual Injection pipe allows for better control of injection rates. So, temperature at which this ammonia should be injected is below 850 degree Celsius because above 850 degree Celsius, ammonia will react with the available oxygen to produce NOx again. How to control ammonia injection? Ammonia injection can be controlled by automatic shutoff valve. So, reduction of high ammonia to air ratio or low fluid gas flow rates triggers the shutoff valve to close. The goal is to inject adequate ammonia into the reactor to remove the NOx. However, if too much of ammonia is injected, it will pass unreacted to the reactor and result in ammonia slip. What is the ammonia feed requirements? Very important topic in our project is ammonia feed requirements. Ammonia feed requirements of nitrogen oxides control system can be estimated based on the stoichiometry of the conversion reaction necessary outlet concentration. This reaction indicates that theoretical NH3 is to NOx molar ratio is necessary for NOx removal. Ammonia is typically injected at stoichiometric ratios of approximately 0.85 is to 1 to 0.9 is to 1 to maintain low ammonia slip level. That is approximately 0.9 moles of ammonia is needed for every mole of NOx that must be reduced in order to achieve the emission limitations. Molar ratio of 1 is to 1 to 1.5 is to 1, however unacceptable ammonia slip will occur at this molar ratio. The graph for NOx versus NH3 bar NOx ratio is shown in this slide. So what is the performance monitoring instrumentation? What are the instrumentation required for monitoring? Yes. What are the parameters we have to control? Yes. Inlet gas temperature, it is very important parameters because temperature is the main parameter which have to be controlled or else the whole system will may go wrong. Continuous emission monitoring for outlet and possibly in the inlet. Next, CEM for outlet and possibly inlet. CEM for NH3 slip, then pressure gauges for monitoring NH3, motor current for dilution fan. Temperature monitoring. How to monitor the temperature? The system should be operate in the temperature range of 550 degree Celsius to, sorry, 550 degree Fahrenheit to 896 degree Fahrenheit, that is approximately 280 degree Celsius to 480 degree Celsius. Our temperatures exceeding approximately 850 degree Fahrenheit, that is 455 degree Celsius, oxidation of ammonia begins to become significant and complex with reaction. At low temperatures, ammonia sulfate and bisulfate formation causes scaling and corrosion. So, temperature should be maintained at 850 degree Fahrenheit. Gas temperature is an extremely important parameter to monitor. Inlet flow gas temperature to the catalyst base is often used as the primary control signal to determine when to divert the gas stream to the bypass duct and stop reagent injection. 
NOx monitoring. So how to monitor NOx? There should be continuous emission monitor of NOx upstream of the SCR but controls the rate of ammonia feed. NOx CEMS provides a direct indication of performance of SCR system and can be used to simultaneously provide compliance data on the SCR reagent. Oxygen monitoring is also very important parameters. Then ammonia monitoring is very important because careful attention should be made to ensure that CEM system is provided accurate representativity because however continuous emission monitoring for ammonia is presently unreliable. NH3 is soluble gas that can be easily lost during sampling. Then reagent flow rates and pressure should be monitored. Fine motor current should be monitored. Next the calculations of ammonia feed required per day. This is very important calculation. First we have to calculate the cal first step is to calculate the pound moles of gas. Formula is available. Second step is to calculate the pound moles of NOx at a controlled condition. Formula is available in this slide. Then third step is to calculate the pound moles of NOx to be reduced. Fourth step is to be calculate the pound moles of ammonia required. And final step, fifth step is to calculate the ammonia feed required per day. So nearly we have calculated that 22,014.85 LB moles of ammonia feed is required per day. This calculation is the stoichiometric ratio calculation. So first step is calculating the moles of ammonia feed to the system. Second step is to calculate the moles of NOx entering the system. Third step is to calculate the stoichiometric ratio. So stoichiometric ratio should be approximately 0.86. If it exceeds to 0 0.7, 0 0.87 or 0 0.9, ammonia slip will be more. So we have to keep the stoichiometric ratio within the range of 0.85 to 0.86. When the stoichiometric ratio is increased, that is 0 0.9, 0 1.0, 1.1, .1, ammonia slip will be increased at extreme level. So we have to maintain stoichiometric ratio, which is an important parameter that should be considered in this project. The last calculation is utilization ratio. First step is to calculate moles of ammonia feed to the system. Second step is to calculate moles of NOx and react. So third step is to calculate utilization ratio. Utilization ratio is 0.38. It should be very less because utilization ratio is how much of ammonia should be required for this mole of NOx. So if utilization ratio is less, less ammonia is required. If it exceeds, it should not exist about 0.5. If 0 0.7, 0 0.8 null came, utilization ratio high means ammonia requirement is also high. So result we found out is if ammonia is injected below 850 degree Fahrenheit, ammonia slip can be reduced and this injection of ammonia will react with the NOx present in the exhaust gas to form nitrogen and water which is harmless for our atmosphere. Important parameter is ammonia is typically injected stoichiometric ratio that is 0 0.85 to 0 0.9. 0 0.86 is good level, good ratio level because at this level ammonia slip will be reduced very much low. If it exceeds or low, ammonia slip will be more. Conclusion. Thus we conclude that NOx concentration rate in the power plant before using ammonia injection system is 1100 ppm. According to our power technology, if we suggest that if to implement the system successfully in this power plant, NOx concentration level will reduce to approximately 132 ppm. That is less than 2 grams per kilowatt hour. Thank you.